work ethic. I, I truly think that I outwork, I, I think a lot of people are as talented as I am. I think I outwork them. So it matters. Everybody's watching who's gonna say, well Gary, what about working smart? Cool, me too. Now what, dick? Turn two to ten, then ten to a bill on the real turn that to a stack. To a stack. Old clothes up the rack, I'm the damn near free. At the worst, I'll get at least double the money back. Money back. Gary V told me to get it. Weezy showed me to flip though. Yeah, they got me up in the crib, two kids, 33 years old, trying to get dough. Already knew I had to get that. Grab the beat, no time to kick back. Relax my feet. Hey, what's good? How is everyone out there doing? Welcome to episode number 66 of Reezy Talks. When I was getting ready to broadcast this shortly before I decided to do it, I was wondering, should I keep announcing the episode every time? Number 66, is that necessary? Just a weird little thought I had. But um, anyways, let's get back to some important stuff. How is everybody out there doing? Um, it is officially fourth quarter for a little bit now, and we are moving into the final stretch of fourth quarter. We got, um, it is November, uh, 5th. And if you are in the reselling game, you should be thinking about black Friday and basically about Christmas every single day. If you do retail arbitrage, you should probably be in at least one big box store every single day. Literally, you probably live at Walmart with the lack of Toys R Us. You just have to go to Walmart a lot. But I wanted to just do this show to answer, of course, answer any regular questions like usual that you guys would have. I'm going to open up the phone lines here in a minute. But maybe just to do some like Q4 strategy type stuff. Um, and, and just to think about that, because this might be some people's first Q4 and they don't understand how it's working. Maybe we can share some, um, tips or strategies with each other. Like you're welcome to call in and share a tip or share a bolo or share, uh, some strategy shout out to my boy, Amazon Slayer, which is, he's been slaying the game and just providing so much, um, bolos and basically giving money away to people. Um, in the reseller community, which is really awesome. Follow him over on Instagram. Thank you so much, Lucid Dreamer, for the $10 super chat. But um, enough about me. Let me go into the chat real quick and holler at some of my homeboys. We got 93 people watching and only eight likes. Please smash the like button. And if any of you have friends or family that would like to learn how to resell as well, share it to your Facebook so we can get some new people in here. Um, let's see. The conversation was going on a little bit before I, before I showed up, I was a little bit late here. Uh, Roman Castro said he's stoked to catch this live. Stoked to have you here, buddy. Um, shout out to Joe, the everyday hustler, Illinois picker, console reg, uh, Vishal Lalwani, Johnny Chingas, uh, shout out to Irie Motivations, shout out to Young Uno. Uh, you can send me some music, Young Uno, Reezy Resales at gmail.com. And in the subject line, line please put me, uh, beats, music. I don't know why I was in the same meet for, for some reason. Um, let's see. Paul, uh, Lucid Dreamer again, shout out, shout out Valerie, neck pillow ad before the Reezy show. <laughs> that's hilarious, neck pillow ad. That's what, a, man, that, that doesn't make any sense. That sounds like poor targeting. Anyways, guys, so if you have any questions and you want to ask them in the chat, please comment questions with all capital or questions, sorry, not questions, question, and then have your question after that. And that makes it very easy for me to identify it and be able to answer the question. <clears throat> For those of you that would like to skip to the front of the line, you can call in and ask me a question. The number is going to be 209-83-REASY. So this is not a joke. This is real. I'm live. And if you call that number 209-83-REASY, my phone will ring, and then I can answer your question here and help everybody else as well, which is always pretty awesome. Um, Let's see what's good, Paul Arona. Uh, William K says, "Do you sell any antiques on eBay?" I do not. I have no experience with that, um, but I hate large stuff. Um, I hate. Okay, here we go. We got the first caller. 
Hey, you're live on Reezy Talks. Who's this? Hey, Reezy. My name's Seth. Uh, Seth Kramer. How are you? Not too bad, man. Been watching for uh, a couple months now. You're awesome. Awesome, awesome. How can I help you, man? All right, so I got into the um, eBay game this month, and I'm I'm doing really really well. But my girlfriend's sister has been doing RA for about three years, and she has a storage unit full of new merchandise. And I just want to know if you have any best practices for tackling it before Christmas. Okay, so brand new stuff with the intent to sell on eBay or how? FBA, FBA. Okay, sorry, I think I missed that. Um, so no, that's all right. are you just using the Amazon seller app then to scan stuff? So, um, I, you know, I didn't want to take on too much at once. I work a full-time uh, job, so I just, I've been doing eBay this month okay. um, because it's my first month of reselling. Prior to that, I was just doing like local and like offer up. And all go, but sorry about that. I just sorry. I, no, sold, no worries, I, sold, I sold the shirt. Uh, <laughs> all right. Do you you do merch too? Yeah, yeah. That was my merch alert. Just went off. Sorry. Go awesome. ahead. Continue. Well, no, no, no. You're fine. So it's really just like it's a, a storage unit, like a ten by five unit, plus a ton of stuff from like Walmart, Menards. You know, anyway, Target, all these things that she's purchased, mm -hmm. and I just don't know if I should ta like try to get as much in before Christmas time, or like how big my order should be. I mean, I've watched a couple videos on how to get it in there, but you know, I don't know. I just I know I just got to start. But any advice for that much merch right away? And I've never sold on FBA. Um, yeah. So f the first thing you're going to want to be able to do is how to understand how fast something will sell. And of course, what it will sell for, I guess you guys already right, yeah. already have the inventory. So you pretty much uh, a sunk cost at this point, but, um, you want to know how fast something's going to sell because say if it only sells one a month, you don't want to send in 50 if you have 50 of them. Right. Yeah, um, so the ranking. Right. Yeah. Understand rank. And most important, I have a video on that um, called understanding sales rank or sales rank 101 or something. But basically just understand that sales rank is not static. It moves all the time. So if, right. if you were to like describe sales rank the most simple way as possible, it's a number that represents how long it's been since it sold last time. And it gets, it gets worse and worse. And then when it sells, it spikes down to a certain area and then it starts getting worse and worse again. So um, over time it moves, you know, and it's just important to know that those spikes represent sales volume, you know, at least one, maybe more. And, um, right. and just to know what, you know, what can you send everything in and be sure that it's going to sell? Um, you know, what do you have to hold I back on? I definitely don't want to like, I definitely don't want to put together a massive order of just, uh, let's say she's got like a hundred of Mickey Mouse keychains. If they're not selling, right. I don't want to put that in the ship. Right, exactly. So if those aren't selling on, and you can send, you know, a, a few and see if they sell, and then they're not selling, maybe you should consider selling them on other platforms, eBay, um, Mercari, um, Mercari, yeah, yeah and anywhere else that you can sell them. Maybe group them together. You know, maybe you have like a few different pieces, put them together, make it on eBay for a Christmas bundle. That's awesome. That's great advice, man. Yeah, I, I started, you know, I started watching you, um, Rally Roots, obviously Gary V's my dude, and it, yeah. I think it took me like two years to hear what he was saying until I actually understood what he was saying. So, if anybody else is out there that's thinking the same thing. So here's like, a here's a starting. question for you. What do you remember? What was the specific like turning point? Was it a certain piece of content that he made that really got like made you take it serious, or was it just like some like was it your own? environment it was just yeah. perfect for it it was, it was the, like he says it's like the perfect storm it's all about the timing and so you know my mom was uh i think i watched a video of him talking to a 14 year old kid that you know said his household his mom his parents were so negative and gary gave him like two pieces of advice and so it was like you got to just pump positivity in a hundred percent of the time. And I just kind of had this perfect storm happen in my life where my mom was diagnosed with cancer. I mm. just moved into like a, a pretty decent, you know, expensive apartment. My job was kind of just going crazy. And so I don't know, I had been doing, I had been doing, um, 
local selling and it was just like one day I just got obsessed with it and I have been ever since and so you know instead of staying up late watching Netflix man I just been listing you know I bought a, a, a Canon T3i and nice. you know just all the stuff that I would need to to list and I I've been on eBay for three weeks and I'm just shy of a thousand in gross sales. So okay, I'm cool. Really good. So you know how to look up yeah. completed sales on eBay and everything like that then? Absolutely. Awesome. There's a cool app that I like to use. It's not free. I think it's like four bucks. It's called completely. And you actually, it's an eBay research uh, tool so you can search stuff and it, it allows me to make decisions faster when I'm searching for stuff. And it also has more data than um, the eBay app. So the history in the Completely app goes back further than the standard eBay uh, three months. app. Yeah, yeah, it's longer. And you can also see, so you could search for like some, you could search for like Tommy Hilfiger shirt and it would show you the sell through percentage. Like here's how many have listed and sold and the average selling price. And you know, you could get a lot more detailed obviously, but having that information is always pretty useful. Oh man, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, today I found a, a Red Bull backpack. It's like in the shape of a can. Oh, tight. And, those uh, are the, I, mean, uh, I think those are the, sorry to interrupt you, but I think those are the backpacks that the girls wear. Is it an insulated backpack? Yeah, dude, it's the real thing. Yeah, it's so like that's the one that, the, that's the one that the like chicks would wear driving around in the, when they were pushing Red Bull hard when it first came out, driving around those little sports cars. And they would jump out yeah. and just start handing out Red Bull. At least where I live, they were doing it back in the day. Yeah, I mean, I've spent like, you know, 15, 20 minutes looking into it. But I just turned around and it was just right there. What did you pay and for it? I grabbed it? it and I was just, uh, six ninety nine. Tight. What do you think it's worth? Well, I mean, seeing as though there's not any listed for sale and I can't find listings, just like on even Googling it, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm going to put it up for... 200 i mean the last one that sold was 200 mine has like i mean it's not in like spectacular condition but it's not right. bad condition yeah it's i could just, i could fully you know, see that good. i could fully see that being worth that much because even me right now i remember the nostalgia of being like i swear i was probably 18 years old when red bull came out it's gotta be like 15, yeah. 15 years ago or something and i just remember i was like what the hell is this drink but they were like hot chicks driving around, giving it away for free in the middle of the summer. And I was like, all right, I'll drink it. <laughs> My girlfriend's like, yeah, let's just keep it for EDC. And like, I just really want to get that, that revenue or that gross sale just added on my account so bad. Cause I, you know, just thought, I don't even see the dollar signs at this point. I just see like the, the sales. It's just like the numbers. Nice. Yeah. It's a video game, man. It's way better than watching Netflix. Oh, for sure. Hands down. It's better. I mean, it's better than any app I've ever used. I don't, I haven't even gone on Facebook ever since Dude, uh, I started getting serious into eBay. I feel you on that. Facebook can be a time suck. Hey, but I'm going to get off the phone and see if we can help some other people out. Um, thanks for calling, bro. I'm glad I could help you out. Um, keep, keep hustling, man. And let me know what that, uh, send me a DM on Instagram when that backpack sells. I want to get the screenshot and then link it back to this conversation and make a little meta content piece. Yo, Breezy, thank you so much. You've been a huge inspiration, and I'm just happy to talk to you, and I definitely will do that. What was your name again? Uh, my name is Seth. Seth, Seth? Kramer. I'm from uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for calling Seth Kramer from St. Paul. Have a good night, bro. You too, man. All right, bye. See you guys. Cool. Well, that was cool. So the audio was all right, guys. I saw you guys in the chat. People were saying, like, put the bottom of the phone to it, but it didn't make much of a difference, did it? Because at least on the iPhone 10, I don't know, sound comes out of the earpiece and out of the bottom. It's the same. It's like stereo. I don't, I don't really get it. Um, so the phone line is open again, guys. It's going to be 209-83 Reezy. Um, boom. We're live on YouTube. Um, 209-83 Reezy. There is an Android uh, app similar to Completely. If anybody knows, please share it. I forget what it's called. It's free also. It has some features that completely doesn't have. If you guys know what it is, please let me know. I'll give you a shout out on the video. Here we go. Caller number two. You're live on Reezy Talks. Who's this? Oh, wow. Hi. Uh, this is uh, Mariah. Hey, Mariah. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I'm great. I'm glad to be doing the live calls again. I love doing it. 
I'm so surprised I got you. Wow. Um, <laughs> um, my question actually is, what advice would you have for people who actually haven't started on Amazon yet? Okay. Um, would you suggest them to start now or to wait until the beginning of the year? Never. No reason to wait ever. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend waiting. The one thing that is important to understand is that right now things are going to start getting really good as the buying volume on Amazon increases for the holiday season. And there's sometimes I've seen it happen where people get started in Amazon during this time and they have a lot of success and then the year ends and then they get really depressed and they don't understand why they're not as successful as they were because they don't realize they started in the uptrend. Right. Um, so that's, that's really the only thing that I think you need to worry about. Um, but so definitely don't wait, start right now. Don't waste any time, but, um, just advice for in general is just get started and start selling something. Did you want to sell using FBA or did you want to store it at your house? Um, I mean, I would prefer FBA. Yeah. You, un you, under sure you understand how it works, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Roughly, ne not necessarily technically and everything, but um, yeah, so you could you could store stuff and I recommend people to do this is to store stuff, like list it and store it in your house. And then when it sells, ship it just till you understand how the process works. Because if you make a mistake like that, you can just cancel your listing and pull it off the shelf and relist it or whatever. Versus if you make a mistake and you sent it off to Amazon's warehouse, Sometimes there's stuff you can't fix. You might have to have it sent back to you just to fix it and send it back to Amazon, you know, stuff like that. Um, but generally what you're going to want to do is focus on selling stuff, not necessarily on making money. And I know that sounds really stupid, but I want you to get comfortable with listing stuff, with shipping stuff when it sells and just understand the process. And then once you're comfortable with the process, like there's nothing that scares you about, you know, how to list and ship and sell something then you can start focusing on making profit on items. But you're going to want to start with stuff in your own house, right? Um, anything that you have that you might be able to sell on Amazon, just get the Amazon seller app, get the free Amazon account, don't pay uh, 40 bucks a month yet. And then just start scanning stuff and learn how to use the app to see what's worth money and what's not and find stuff. And when you have, you know, maybe 40 pounds of stuff, then put it all in a box and ship it off to FBA and just get started like that. But um, just focus on learning it and not taking a large financial risk while you're learning it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome. What was your name again? Mariah. Awesome, Mariah. Thank you for calling in. Have a good night. Okay. Thanks for your time. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah, guys, if you're new to Amazon, um, don't get scared. Just focus on making sales um, because you want to get comfortable with the process of making sales. A lot of times people can get intimidated with Amazon because compared to eBay, eBay seems so much more accessible. We already have an eBay account. You've bought stuff on eBay. All you have to do is sell it on eBay. The reality is while Amazon might be a little bit more complicated, it's actually so much better and so much easier in the long term. You don't have to take photos for items. You don't have to create product descriptions. It's actually really, really great. There's more buyers. You can sell things for more money. Um, don't be scared of Amazon. So the way to do that is to just ease your way into Amazon with stuff that's not costing you a lot. So little financial risk or risk overall. And then once you learn the system, move forward with focusing on trying to actually extract more value out of it. So if you called while I was in that call, please call back. The number is 209-83-REASY. Give me a call. Let's make those hard problems easy. That was the stupidest rhyme ever. Um, let me go into the chat and see if there's any questions while I wait for the phone to ring. Uh, let's see. Oh, someone said they like the background. Thank you very much. Um, would you ever consider meeting up in New Orleans? I definitely would. Please, guys, please smash the like button. Don't make me sound like I'm too thirsty to get that like. There's 33 likes, 173 people watching. Just please hit the like button real quick. I'm out here taking live calls. 
You're live on Reezy Talks. Who's this? Sean Brown from San Diego, California. How you doing? Bro? Good. Sean Brown? Yes, sir. What's up, Sean? How can I help you, bro? Not much, man. I just came across your channel, actually, probably about a month ago. I was on Gary V and uh, learned about Slip and Free stuff. Um, one of the questions I have for you is this. I realize as adults that um, I'm more of an auditory learner. So uh, YouTube content is great because it's visual and audio. And I right. Do you have any good uh, audio books? for people who expand their knowledge of uh, uh, online selling as well? Like so, top audio not, um, there's not, actually, that's a good question. There's not a lot of specific audio books to this industry. What I would recommend is podcasts. So I have a podcast like this. What we're doing right now will eventually be on my podcast, the audio from this. And so this would be, okay. this is episode 66. So I have 65 other episodes on there. Um, the first 30 episodes that I did numbers one through 30 are just like this, where I'm taking live calls from people and answering questions. And those are what I recommend for beginners the most, because it's likely that the questions other people have are the same questions you're going to have. You know what I mean? And right, so, right, right. and then, so after that episodes 31 to 60, I interviewed other resellers and just talked with them in every episode. So it's two hours and all that. That's about what, like 120 hours of content. So I think that could oh, that wow. that could get you going. But there's other good reselling uh, chan uh, podcasts as well. The name of your podcast is just Reezy Podcast. Uh, Reezy oh, Resells, okay. yeah. Just look Reezy Resells on I'm search, and you'll find it. Well, I did not know about that. Thank you for that. I appreciate you, brother. You yeah, yeah. Know. No worry. Good luck with your journey, man. My man. Thank All right. You. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Later. All right, guys. The phone is open. 209-83. Reezy. Let's see. Um, what supplies do I need to print out the labels to put on the books? Um, you could use a laser printer with 30 up labels, Avery labels, or you can use a Dymo printer. Uh, Dymo 450 Turbo is the one that I use to print the FBA labels. Let's see. T -t 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 what's the best labeling software and computer combination for getting started? Um, you don't really need software to label. You need a label printer or like I just said, the it's the exact same question I just answered earlier. Uh if anyone has any questions, please give me a call. 209 83 Reezy. Romulux in the chat. How you doing, bro? You're live on Reezy Talks. Who's this? Hey, it's Miriam. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Um, I was wanting to know, should I be worried about taxes already? Because I started in September and... We're talking about this on the Amazon Slay team. On the Amazon what team? Oh, uh, Slayer team, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, you you definitely should be worrying, and I hope it's not a problem, but I accidentally just showed your number on the, uh, the live show. <laughs> so I hope nobody calls you. Please don't call her, guys. That would be rude. But um, – so for taxes, you should definitely be concerned with that inside of your Amazon Seller Central. You want to register for all of the states where you have Nexus in. The thing is, this conversation is like kind of gray area because it's not it hasn't fully like been decided or enforced at least yet with the taxes and I'm not super duper qualified to give this information. So what my I can only say what my accountant told me to do. They told me to only pay taxes for the states that my business is operating in, right? So the states where we receive and ship products from. And uh, and that's basically it for us. If you really want to be on top of it 100%, I know there's a software or a service called Tax Jar, which will make your life easy and like pay out as much tax as possible to all the states you might be required to pay tax to. 
Yeah, that was just a scary thought. I'm, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like, you know. Right. Yeah. No, you should. So the thing is, the way it works in your Amazon seller account is when you put a a state tax number in the tax permission settings, then when a customer orders from you that ships to that state, it charges them sales tax and that gets added into your balance. So then at the end of the year, when you pay sales tax to those states that you have your sales tax number in your Amazon tax user permissions area, um, you'll have already accumulated that money. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. But yeah, it is. Taxes are the worst thing ever. My advice is just to hire a good CPA and accountant to help you get it done. Okay. Because I know, I mean, do they, does Amazon send me something at the end of the year? Or yes. At the end of the, at the end of the year, I believe it's only if you hit $20,000 or more, you will get a form from Amazon. Um, I forget the tax form number, but it's, it's okay. like, it's like, uh, I think, what is it? A 1040 E or I don't know, something like that. But yeah, they definitely are reporting to the IRS and then giving you a form. All right. I just, I don't want to get, you know, the come tax season just hit up with, you know, it's like, oh, great. Right. Yeah. I think it's not, it's not the hugest deal. If you get in trouble, you just pay it back. I don't think they usually charge you interest. Um, and if you're a new seller, or, you know, I can't see them being too, you know, harsh on you for that. It's not like they teach us this stuff in school, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I appreciate your help. Awesome, Thank awesome. You. Thanks for calling in. Bye. Is anybody other than me mad that they want us to pay taxes and they got all these rules and regulations, but at the same time, they don't teach us how to pay taxes in public school, not in elementary school, not in high school. They don't teach us how to, how to pay taxes. They don't teach us how to start a business. It's so stressful. What do they, what do they teach you just to show up on time to be where you're supposed to be when the bell rings? The phone lines are open guys. 209-83 Reezy. I saw that shifty eyes. Corey was going to call 209-83 Reezy. Call through so I could quit being super cheesy with my rhymes uh let's see do you need to print the shipping label yourself or can ups do it you need to print the shipping labels yourself um let's see we got we got a, a call from Cowtrain. oh it's avery <laughs> hey you're live on reezy talks how's it going avery yo what's up reezy <laughs> It's Canoe Boy. So, <laughs> what's going on? How are you? If, hold on, hold on. I need to hold hold on a second. I need to preface this call okay. first. All right. So, guys, the guy that just called right now, Avery Romer, he has a YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description. But um, he traveled across the country, lived in his car, and sold books like via FBA while he was traveling the country and living out of his car. And that's not even the most interesting thing. The most interesting thing is he did the whole thing with like a, a 15 foot, 15 foot, Avery? 17 and a half. 17 and a half foot aluminum canoe on your roof of your yeah. car? What kind of, yeah. what kind of car? This wasn't a big car. Like yeah, that would. Toyota Corolla. On a Toyota. <laughs> Put a, put a bed down. <laughs> on a Toyota Corolla, he had a 17 and a half foot aluminum canoe tied down to the top like literally his car had like a cholo vibe with like a long brim on it and you had to peek underneath it um but i met avery um online a while back and then in person in los angeles at the turn the page conference so that's avery that's why i call him canoe kid but uh great great dude check him out on instagram uh what's up avery so I've, I've been thinking lately, and I tried the whole bulk thing out. It was a mess. Um, it was I'm a not mess. Opposed to it anymore. Yeah, it was just it was just crazy. I, I you know, I'm used to driving a Toyota Corolla around. I had a 26 foot truck with all the Gaylords in it, and it was just it, it was it was crazy. So I in the week before, I did cherry picking with my friend, and we ended up getting. I think we got like way more books than I did through the bulk operation. Right. Granted, I'm not like 
I'm not made for bulk and I haven't, that's my first time doing it. So I can't really make right. a fair judgment off of that, but it's been making me think, I know you got your guys running the route, you know? Um, yeah, that's the thing, point, dude. Like, I think the, uh, bulk books is a raisin cookie, right? It's like, it's not as good at, you know what I mean? Right? Like, do you remember when we were sitting there and we were talking and I don't know if you heard me make this comment at, in the Phoenix mastermind, but um, I forget who the gentleman was, the Asian dude that has the um, bulk book warehouse. And he was, oh, okay, and, yeah. and he was saying how many, what his gross sales were in books for 2017. You're talking about Daniel. I think so. And then he said how many employees he had. And so it's not like he's not making yeah. profit or whatever, but I was like, holy crap. You know, it was like, less than three times more than what we're doing in gross out of a, right, a 10 by right. 15 storage unit in a couple garages. Yeah. So, so and yeah. with two employees, you know? So for me, I was yeah, like, that's wow, like, it, that's it's been on my mind. I'm, I'm like, because I was like, how big is uh, how, like, how long did it take you to make that route? And at what point were you like, this is such a solid route that I can pay someone 15 an hour to go it, do it. It, it yeah. wasn't it. So it didn't happen over time. And to be honest, it happened on accident as a necessity. We were, we were moving from that area. And so it was either stop doing it or hire someone to do it and manage it for us and move and right. keep it going. So it was like, what do you do? You know, you live in a really good area. You have it all set up and it's really good. And I, and honestly, what it was kind of an evolution for me because what happened was I used to do a lot of the work myself and then I, I broke my foot maybe, I don't know, four years ago or something. And then all of a sudden I couldn't do a lot of the daily work, right? Sourcing. And, yeah. and it still kept working. And I never thought, I thought it would be really hard to keep it going. But when I had no option except for it to work, it worked. Right. And so that's when I really realized that it can, that you can definitely make money hiring people to source for you, but it's not like I'm just letting them go random because if I was, I would pay them like per book, you know what I mean? Um, like Caleb's model or whatever, but to pay them hourly, they have to be doing something that I know is worth it. And that's because I used to do it. And then we set up relationships with people and et cetera, et cetera. But it's definitely, it's a lot harder to scale the cherry picking model because you're literally limited at the supplies you have and it's really hard i couldn't expect my workers to develop a new relationship with a new like retail supplier i have to do that you know that's like higher level pay right and yeah um so it, it has a really hard ceiling but but like you said the like investment cost the space needed the overhead it's much much less than running a bulk book operation but so that brings me back to the beginning is that you have to do bulk books in a way to where like, for one, I think you have to do it large. You know, if you're going to do 10 gay lords, you might, uh, you know, if you're going to do 10 a week, you might as well do 20 a week. You know what I mean? Something like right, that. Like exactly, you, so, exactly. so that because you're fixed, your overhead costs are fixed. So you might as well focus on turning over more inventory in that time, but you have to do it in a way that like fully removes you from it. And you're not involved in doing any of the labor and, like higher managers and everything. So where you're just overseeing it, the profit's not really there to be like invested in it like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, exactly but it is, but it is scalable because you could, you could go from 10 a week to 20 a week to 30 a week to opening another warehouse. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. So I don't and, know. I digress. Are you looking for like a certain, certain type of, personality when it comes to the person going out and are you using well they like they, mode they, or? they have to be yes hidden mode they have to be um self starter stealth reliable um the thing is is i always so some of my best hires have been like ex-military people or um right. in, in general people who worked at a certain place for a long time but military and uh people who are good at music like musicians they play instruments i don't know why i just have a theory of, like that either the playing an instrument like opens their brain up to a certain thing i know music makes your brain better but um playing a music instrument is hard right and like you know if you played the trumpet for 12 years you know how many times did you practice and show up to band class and 
yada yada yeah, yada. It's, it's it like yeah, it symbolizes responsibility, right? You're not going to be good at anything if you you know what I mean. So it's kind of like I look for that in people that they have a spark about something. They're good at something. They've invested time in in something. You know what I mean. So it's not like yeah. the you know, if I interviewed someone once and I asked them what their hobbies and interests were and they said partying and I was like, oh my God, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> like who, like not only is that your hobby, but you thought it was okay to say that in a job interview, right? So. Yeah, like when I did the bulk books, I only had six Gaylords and I, I, I put on Facebook, I got like, I had like a total of four different people help me out because I was just like, I need help with this, you know, and this kid came over and we came, we got to the bottom of the Gaylord. He couldn't reach the books anymore. And I was like, dude, just hop in. And my friend who weighs 250 pounds was like helping me earlier. And he was like climbing all inside the Gaylord and everything. This dude weighed 120 pounds. And he couldn't even hop inside of the Gaylord. He couldn't even like bring himself. How up much there. did like, he weigh? Damn it! Look, one hundred and twenty. And he couldn't yeah, hop he in couldn't there. Hop, he couldn't hop into a Gaylord. And I was. I just handed him. I, I went inside. Got twenty bucks. I went outside. And I was like, Yo, man. I was like, I'm actually good for now. But I appreciate you coming. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is? What is? What is that like? You got to be able to, you got to have like some abdo abdominal strength, hop up there, put your six pack <laughs> or your lack of a six pack on the rit on the thing, flex your abs and teeter totter the upper half of your body down in there and get those damn books. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. But the one good thing about Scott IQ is, is when you, when you look on the, uh, when you swipe right, it tells you how many scans they do right. an hour. So I, I do like 800 an hour. And when I see someone only doing 100, I'm like, so they even be paying this person. So, right. Um, exactly. It's a struggle for me though, because I want to delegate the, the scouting. It's just, I think it's like a confidence thing. I'm just like, no, I know my route, you know, and I know right. eventually like I need to, I need to do what you're doing because now you have so much time to do other stuff. Right. I delegated the listing. But, yeah. And that's um, another thing yeah. that, and that's another thing that I've like thought about or kind of learned uh, over time through like hiring people is that like, let's say, you know, for example, I pay myself $75,000 a year, right? But if I, if me and my business partner who also gets paid the same amount, if we fired everyone and did the job ourselves, um, you know, we could probably make like 120,000 a year each, right? Or maybe 130 or 140 or whatever, because you got to leave money in the business. But the point is, is that like, I would much rather make 75,000 and only have to, you know, not even manage the operation because we hired a manager, just put fires out, then, you know, make 130 yeah. and 140 and have to do four, six, eight hours. You know, it's like, I don't want to be the, the weak link in my business where it's like, if I don't go and do that eight hours or 10 hours every single day, we're not going to have continued growth. Like that's what employees are for, you know, like we're the, the boss. Yeah. We should be thinking like big picture stuff. How do we get more employees? Exactly. How do we do more volume? How do you, because if you're not thinking like that, then you're literally just going through the motions for one, you're going to die eventually because you're not growing. And for two, you basically just created a job for yourself because the whole goal for us yeah, as, exactly. as entrepreneurs is to like realize the unlimited potential in every hour that we have and what we can creatively do like as businessmen and business women to ourselves and so you just need to keep scaling that opportunity factor and not, you know, rest on your laurels because, you know, maybe, maybe you made 30,000 now you make a hundred thousand, but like, that's not a win if you just keep making a hundred thousand forever and just never like grow, you know, you just elevated your pay. But yeah. like, I mean, I guess you could be happy with that for me. I want to like, just get like stupid, ridiculous, like levels, you know, not like, like, yeah. LA is expensive too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I live in Northern California, but anyways, so whatever your goal is, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard to keep pushing through it, but you got to keep pushing. You don't want to like stagnate and just like work a job basically, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You can create like a job. Like it's even worse than a job because you're not even. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I, I think about it super, super deep lately to the point where like, and because I've been traveling more, when I come back from traveling, I get like low key depressed because traveling is really fun. And then I have to, and I right. still, I still do shit like online arbitrage and whatever, but I'll like, I'm not as, uh, 
I'm not as diligent on like all of the boring work tasks like emails and stuff like that. So then I get back from a trip and I have to go to answering all these emails, et cetera. And it's not fun at all. It's not moving the needle. It's not making our business any more money because, and it's, and I think about it, like literally I could do a, a half hour, uh, consultation for 150 bucks, but here I am spending two hours answering emails that didn't make me or my company any money at all. Like how yeah. is, how is that something that I should be doing? You know, like I need to hire someone to answer my emails. And if that's the case, how much shit is there like that, that I'm doing that doesn't move the needle that I could pay someone else a couple bucks to do. Yeah. I, I struggle with that all the time. And I just read the one thing and I listened to it and it's just like, I, I keep asking myself that question, you know, uh, what, what, what can I do today that would make everything else either easier or unnecessary? And, and a lot of times, like I, my brain just tries to check emails or go list books or something, or I'm like, I need to get these books out when I could just pay someone else to do it and focus on something more important, you know? Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's tough to realize it, but I think you get to a space and I'm sure it will only happen more and more. So, you know, as you grow as a business person or like, you know, like think about people that are really successful, like. Mark Cuban or Gary V or whatever, like they didn't get to that point where they're like now, like every 15 minutes is like super valuable to them, you know, but now they realize, you know, what they can do with their time, what the opportunity costs is, and they just double down on it. Yeah. All right, man, I'm going to, I'm going to get, get off the phone. I could talk to you for hours, but I'll see, yeah, I'll see sure. you, see you on the flip side, bro. Check out what's your Instagram, Avery. Uh, it's Romer the Romer. Romer. R the R O A M E R. Romer the Romer. R O M E R the R O A M E R. Romer the Romer. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Avery Romer. Have a good night, bro. Peace out, Romer. All right, later. That's actually cool getting a call from someone that I know in real life that I've met. The phone lines are open, guys, for a little while longer tonight maybe for 15 or 20 more minutes 209-83-R-E-E-Z-Y. let's see if we got any questions um hit the like button if you're watching guys at least half of you haven't hit the like button i will definitely definitely appreciate that and if you guys don't know i have a podcast on itunes just search for reezy resells and that will come up for you it looks like we got another caller you're live on Reezy Talks. Who's this? Hi there. This is uh, Daniel. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, pretty uh, kind of nervous, but uh, exciting at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No worries, man. So, uh, where Where are you from, Dan? I'm from um, uh, Northwest Indiana, right here by Chicago. Nice, nice. How's it? How's the weather yeah, over yeah. there right now? Is it cold? Uh, it's, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, it's like 40, 50 degrees on the rainy side. So. Okay. All right. How can I help you? Pretty crazy stuff. Um, well, I'm I'm pretty uh pretty brand new to all this. I've been doing a lot of eBay lately. Um, I went recently went to a garage, a huge like wide city city wide garage sale. Oh, those are my favorite. And, oh, yeah. so you sound like you sound like you and follow Gary V. Definitely follow him. I follow you. So it's definitely an honor to even talk to you. I'm always I'm listening to you like every. Every day while I drive, I, I drive a truck, so I'm just listening. To oh, you. awesome! So you're on you're on the podcast then. Oh, awesome! Cool. Did, <laughs> oh, did you did you? Oh, are you just listening on YouTube or are you on the podcast? Uh, I think uh, I might have caught uh, one podcast um, episode, but mainly uh, YouTube is where I've been at. Okay, cool. So you have like so, YouTube Red or something? Maybe you're just listening to audio. Um really just uh, skipping these ads but oh yeah yeah cool yeah yeah so also on um on itunes um anything i make that's on youtube that's like this 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 episode will eventually be on the podcast and so there's got to be like 75 or 80 episodes on the podcast that you could listen to and there's no ads yet if you're watching this and your company you know might want to benefit hit me up i get 10,000 downloads a month um, but yeah, good way to consume the content over there. Um, but more specifically, how could I help you out today? 
Um, more specifically, um, I recently uh, tried to uh, uh, for the uh, I believe it was like forty dollars a month for the um, not the uh, there's two versions, right? The the one with a dollar per item, and then the other one. And I guess I'm having a hard time getting approved. Uh, I guess what's the best way to go about it to get to get approved? I guess maybe with my address that was different. Maybe they didn't accept it for that reason. I don't know why exactly. So for it started on Amazon FBA. Um, and you didn't get approved. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I have exactly no. Have I have no. Uh, I really have no input for that because I haven't made a new Amazon account for an incredibly long time. Um. Okay. But just just be make sure you read all the fine print. There's a lot of, uh, like just the other day I sent them and they didn't approve it. And I found out the reason was because I had to it had to be in color. You know, I just didn't read the fine print. So maybe just try look over it again and see if there was some fine print that you missed, or uh, maybe try other documents. I'm not sure. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and do that and take my time with that. Just yeah, you know, get really excited to to start and just awesome you know, uh, make some make some money. And Hell yeah, we are. Besides that, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just really impressive. And um, I mean, I really don't know anyone that are, that's around me that's doing this. Okay. Maybe one other person, but but uh, yeah, I'm excited. I just see the potential, and you know, I, I Great. definitely see uh, myself uh, doing a lot with it as long as I can get you know started here. But other than that, um, uh, uh, I guess there was, is there anything else that I, I mean you could throw at me as far as like um, NBA just beginning? just uh, I'm coming out with a free Amazon course here pretty soon, and that uh, when that comes out, check that out. It probably will be out in in an, less than a week, and maybe a few days. It's going to be about 15 okay. videos, completely free, um, and that should help you get going, get your head understanding, you know, some of the basic stuff about Amazon. Sounds good. Yeah, um, and just just FYI, like I've been doing, I've been like been listening on uh, Poshmark, Mercari, like everything that you've been saying. Like I'm just just shooting the gun, man, and just trying to see, I guess my my niche, I guess if you will. So right, how's it? How's it? Are you getting oh, some yeah. success? Yeah, for actually Poshmark, uh, I've had a couple like sweaters and stuff, and some clothes, and it's just like it sold. So that was like. I guess Poshmark's pretty hot right now. It's, it's yeah, Poshmark is it, you know, Poshmark's killing it. I know a lot of people are killing it on Poshmark. There's a lot of business models, clothing based business models that are on people are doing on eBay that other people are having much more success with on Poshmark because there's less sellers and it's a different type of customer. Um, so if you sell right. clothing at all, men's or women's, you should be selling on Poshmark. Um, and that includes shoes for my sneaker heads out there. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, good good to hear that you're getting it going, man. You're excited. Um, I wish you the best. I'm going to let you go and see if we can get another person on the phone here. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Have a good night, brother. All right, guys. 209-83-Reezy. Let me see. I got a text from Zach. What is Zach saying? Zach, my buddy Zach. Oh, we're talking about Redbubble. Um, oh, we got no caller ID. Someone hit me with the star six seven. Welcome, you're live on Reezy Talks. Uh, super smart there with the no caller ID. Um, that way I don't accidentally show your number. Who's this and how can I help you? It is your friend, the mushroom. Uh, Corey, what is up, Corey? Not too much, man. How, how, are, you, how are you doing? Good. Look at if you guys want want to call Corey, that's his number. No caller ID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna let you slip. <laughs> oh man, that's smart, man. You're out here strategy, bro. You got your eyes on the prize. Yeah. How yeah, are but, uh, you? How are you? Let's. What's your What's your I'm great, man. What's your What's your sales for the day? How's your store? Uh, my sales for the day are pretty low today. Uh, speak Speak up! Speak uh, up! They can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sales on Monday were pretty bad, but we did about a thousand dollars on eBay yesterday. I, I, I recalled all of my Amazon inventory, so I'm, I'm almost entirely an eBay seller now. Right. But uh, I start, I started an experiment with Merchant Fulfilled Prime here. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm working on my first fifty uh, Merchant Fulfilled Prime orders. So nice. We'll see how that goes. I, 
I already do same day fulfillment before right. 2 p.m. anyway, so it really fits into what I do. Awesome, perfectly. So awesome. Let me let me let me introduce you a little bit to the listeners before sure. they just like try to like drop into our bromance like halfway through the game. Um, so Corey, Corey, uh, on Instagram and YouTube, his handle is a mighty mushroom. He is a eBay seller from the Pacific Northwest area who specializes in estate sales. Yeah, Corey. Would yeah, you, would you say that? Good. I would say that. Would that, it, he also has shifty eyes. This is a very important thing to know. I, I would. I would disagree with that. But, he he disagrees, know. but if you see his YouTube channel, he gets when he gets excited. <laughs> when he gets excited, he got these eyes to where like you just know he's up to something, right? So, but he knows a ton about a ton of stuff. We did a video. What was it? Six months ago, when you got those Pendleton blankets. It has to be at least. At least, long, and yeah. you sold all those, right? They probably sold rather quickly. Absolutely. I mean. Some of them took a little longer to sell than others. Obviously, some were more desirable than others. But yeah, I would say right. 95% of that inventory. But also, with, with something like that, I know you like to move your inventory pretty fast, and you would rather sell it than try and get a little bit more. Uh, with something like that that is rare and like irreplaceable, do you hold out for a higher price, or do you just let it go? I'm looking to meet a specific sales criterion every day okay so i i use the cost-based method and everything goes into my inventory and an average price comes out that way i don't really have to worry about the price of individual items because really my inventory sells i source good inventory and i have a lot of great sources so i don't really have to worry a lot about stagnant inventory and I don't really have to, I can make deals and I make deals all day. It's a huge part of my business, taking best offers, counter offering, answering emails, answering questions, you know, providing on eBay right now, we're doing roughly 60 new listings every single day. Nice. So, and that's yeah, one person. So yeah, I have one contractor right now, but when things cycle up, I have other guys who come in and work for me. I use contractors to produce my product. Which so they're doing between five and six listings an an hour. Um, you know, Jeremy can actually come in and do sixty listings in um six hours. So okay, five hours, depending on the product. Yeah, he's, cool. He's quite a professional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, it, if it's a, if it's more if it's more similar items, you can list faster. Exactly, and he has templates like we. We have professional, like we have several types of cameras, several types of phones, so it's from several types of tablets, different size light cubes, the big giant ones, small. Right. Yeah, you know, we have, and everything's organized for him to kind of shuttle through and get things done. Right. So I mean, he makes on average like twenty bucks an hour, which is a great wage. Are you? Oh, you're paying him per item, correct? I pay two dollars per listing. Okay. On eBay. So what does that mean? That you? What's your? What's your floor price on eBay? Like, say you got something for free. What is the least you're willing to sell it for? I mean, my break even is somewhere with somewhere around thirteen dollars. After paying fees and employee costs and storage. Yeah, if you take it, if you take an average of all costs uh, and you exclude acquisition costs, would be like free. So yeah, I would say more like twelve dollars. So it okay. cost me because because of shipping, obviously. Yeah, yeah, because shipping is shipping is so ridiculous. I just it bothers me when yeah. stuff like when stuff that's like lightweight, but like you can't pack it without keeping it under one pound because it's like like uh, let's say it's something you could put into a like a cup. You can't put it into a bubble mailer and pay only, you know, five ninety or six ninety, whatever it is. Because it's going to break. So you have to put it in a box, which requires more packing. And then all of a sudden it weighs, you know, one pound, three ounces. And so now it's two and pounds, priority mail. And you're if you're lucky, you pay seven bucks or something because it's in state. Otherwise, you're paying like eight, ten, twelve. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if you ship a mug and it weighs a pound, you're going to pay on average $9.20 or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. It pisses me off that shipping is so expensive. So I mean that the, the if you look through 
my store and anybody's welcome to, you know, look at our souls and look at what we sell and how we sell it. You'll right. notice that we have lots and lots of low weight items, especially in the new category. That you can ship first so, class. Exactly. And you'll notice a, 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 the vast majority of our shoes are, you know, below the size, just below the size, like nine, nine and below, which are. Yeah, yeah. Kids, sizes, kids, small men's, kids, women's. Uh, Exactly, and they fit in a um, they fit in a bubble. You know, don't yeah. be afraid to ship shoes in a in a in a uh, padded fly rate envelope. Right, I, I use I go through tons and tons. And tons yeah, and tons. I mean, and I don't know if I don't know what the legality is on it, but I abuse the shipping supplies, and so don't come in and get me for this, whoever you uh, eBay police are out there or whatever. But Dude, I figure, I figure if no, 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 hold on, let me get it off. I figure if I'm paying for priority shipping, right? So like. If I'll I'll ship some shoes in a bubble mailer, right? But I'll first wrap them in a Tyvek priority mailer before I put it in there, or vice versa. You know what I mean? And it's like, so I, I'm paying I, priority. I, Get off my back. I, yeah, dude. I asked the the our our um the, the the guy the postmaster, and he said that's absolutely acceptable. So he actually gave me a tip and said you take a small flat rate box. You put it inside of a uh, flat rate envelope, and that saves you like seventy five cents or something, and that's totally legit. Nice. The postmaster the s- actually told me to do that. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> well, so a lot of the super you know, honestly, flat I'm flat I'm flat less flat. I'm less worried. Like, I will follow the rules, but I will bend them a little bit. And like, my main focus, obviously, besides profiting and staying in business, is keeping my customers happy, and not like exactly. violate and not violating the the rules of the platform that I'm selling on. Cause that's like everything. And like Absolutely. the, the postage thing is like, I you know how many thousands of dollars I spend on postage a year. It's a lot of air miles. Like I just checked my credit card the other day. I have over half a million air miles. Yeah. It's that, I use mine. It's that postage it just adds up, baby. I know. Yeah, yeah, I, I put all of it on me. So what? Let's a hey, let's talk about while I got you here. Let's talk about something mm-hmm. that happened in your business recently that sucked and how you overcame it. Oh my gosh, dude! Um, so this is just a general statement to everyone out there who's listening to this. I've been selling on eBay for a very long speak, time. Speak up a little bit, and please. I've been, selling, I, I've been selling on eBay for a very long time, and I've been selling online for quite a long time, uh, and. What's getting more difficult, and everybody should freak out about this, the more finicky across all platforms. And blame Amazon. You have to. Yeah, I don't need to. You mean whether you blame somebody or not? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's situation. funny. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. It's not like Amazon did it. Like the customer did what was more comfortable for the customer. Like it would have happened anyways. Yeah, they opened. They they, they left two doors unlocked. And people walk through the door that was more convenient. Right. You know, I mean, it's just they they, they just they they they, they removed barriers. But what's yeah, really difficult because you get is, you get more know, returns and shit now. I mean, I'm I'm I used to get like point I would say three years ago point five percent returns on eBay. I'm mm-hmm. seriously less than one percent, and now. I'm like struggling to keep it under 5%. Right. So, which is, uh, which ultimately just affects the customer more because we have to build that into, into our sales exactly. price. And so, exactly. so I think no one, people don't understand that. Like when prices go, when things change, like, you know, like if they, uh, you know, minimum wage is now $15 an hour in California. What do you think happened? Like everything went up 50 cents in every store. Yep. Yeah, so I mean that's I'm gonna say the, the I, I had a I had a day where I had six hundred I had like four very high value returns that added up to six hundred dollars, which is, doesn't sound like a lot of money to most people, but right. when you're when you're when you're coasting on an average to try to like figure things out and and when you're you know my business is still young uh, and I and I I reinvest everything that I don't. Um, that I that I don't need to use for my lifestyle, which is very simple, right? And that's how I've grown my business so quickly. Uh, even those kind of roadblocks can just really make yeah. Watch it. Watch out! I might I might be moving up there to that that affordable, simple lifestyle in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> I don't know it's, about affordable. Hey, dude, it's a lot more affordable. Well, I'm definitely not moving to Austin, Texas. So 
Um, we got to go somewhere. California is getting ridiculous. I mean, I rent a, I rent an amazing commercial space for two thousand dollars a month that I don't think you could even find here for that price. So nice. I'm very very fortunate in many ways. I mean, those are the kind of things that I beat my head over, you know. And and then when eBay randomly changes something or I can't ship things or there's a lot of technology related issues. I every day I think to myself, why am I not reaching out to guys like Reezy so that we can like figure out how to create some kind of alternate platform where we take experienced sellers only and move forward with that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. I mean, eventually, right. Because like decentralized, like, you know what I mean? Globalized shopping, like that's where we're at now, right? It's globalized and anybody can buy my thing from anywhere. It doesn't matter. You know, it's not limited by how far I can yell, you know, for someone, you know, we can yell really far now, you know, but when we're like, over here, over here, we got sweaters over here. Like, you know, that reaches the whole world, right? You know, so, but, you know, we the ball's not in our court. We're playing in someone else's court. And even something like, you know, Facebook Marketplace is really cool because it's like the Wild West right now where they're not charging people fees to sell. Um, exactly. But eventually they definitely probably will. Um but yeah, what's the uh, what's the what's the Bitcoin of eBay? You know what I mean? Like, what's the how do we Uber eBay? You know what I mean? Like, what's the decentralized peer to peer? I'm not talk about it. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about it on this um, podcast, but I definitely have some ideas. I'm sure we'll talk here shortly. There got to be something okay. like that. There got to be a cryptocurrency, blockchain based like yeah, sales it platform. Doesn't have to be any, it doesn't have to be any of that. The, the thing you have to ask yourself when you're talking about these things is is the product amazon or is the product the product and at this point i think like it's weird because ebay almost doesn't seem like a product it's yeah a marketplace no i, I feel you amazon, with amazon it's a product yeah because and i'll tell you perfect example right now i just bought a brand new microphone for my brand new camera i bought a 300 hundred dollar microphone right um i could have got it on amazon for like 276 i think and it would have been here two days later. Instead, I bought it on eBay for two sixty two, so I saved fifteen dollars. But it took five or six days to get here versus showing up in two days. And while I was waiting for it to show up and checking the tracking again and again, I was thinking to myself, "God, I'm an idiot. I should have just bought it off Amazon. Like, who gives a shit about fifteen dollars?" Yeah, the one of I mean. On eBay, most people, when they make comments that are positive, I would say 95% of the time, it's because I offer very, very fast shipping. Right. More you ship same else. day, right? Absolutely. Yeah, same very important. Two is guaranteed. Same day before two is guaranteed, but let's say you order at three and, and, and I, I have, I'm, I'm working on something else, I will get up and make sure that happens. Right, like yeah. Know that it's fast. Like, it seems it seems any, trivial, but when I get a good feedback on eBay that says like very fast shipping, you know, and I actually like did what like you're saying, I put effort into shipping it fast. Like it makes me feel really good. It seems stupid, like that one little comment, you know, but it's like I just feel good that I I made that transaction awesome for that person. Well, you added value, and it didn't cost you anything. So, I mean, if you listen to any successful business person, they're going to tell you, they're going to, they're, they are, all of them are struggling to figure out how to add value unless they have a ridiculously unique product and none of us do. So, I mean, right. as far as the problem goes that I talked about before, this is the, this is the tip of, 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 of this is my tip of the day for everybody who's listening. Or Let's do it. Future. Add value when you can. Right. If you can rush out the door and get somewhere for somebody to do something that you need to do or source something yep. or take a part out for somebody or do something that adds value and you get compensated for it, even if that compensation is non-monetary, do it. You'll find that it motivates you in a different way. Yeah. No, it's it's huge, especially for competing for the sale or for attention, like simple stuff. Like if you're selling a VCR, you know. Um, send, you know, RCA cables with it. Literally you could get, you know, on eBay, you know, a hundred pack of brand new RCA cables wrapped up for like a quarter each or something. Right. And then throw, throw one in with each VCR. Or if it's a toy that requires batteries, you know, maybe you have batteries in the warehouse to throw some batteries in there. They don't have to be Duracell. 
it can be literally the run of the mill batteries. You know what I mean? Like, um, Absolutely. I have a. Well, that adds value on both sides too. So it adds value to the to the customer because they're getting some, they're getting lanyards, they're getting something extra. Right. It adds value to you, to you because likely it lowers the chance of a return. Right. Exactly. So and also just like I sold a uh, I sold a little like a guitar kind of toy thing. And um, I had modified it so it makes like alien sounds. I won't get into that too much. But the guy wanted to, the guy that wanted to buy it wanted to see a video of it, right? And so I made a private YouTube video of it and then sent it to him on eBay. But he just wanted to hear, you know, how, you know what I mean? Like it's 2018 and eBay doesn't have video. I understand customers wanting video. Like eBay, if you're watching this, why do we not have video yet? Like, it's kind of ridiculous. Dude, we could do a whole show about things that don't work on eBay. Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> eBay could do so much, like, right? Like, they could add video to the platform. They could add um, the ability to broadcast live QVC-style shows, you know what I mean, on the eBay platform. They could have actual auctions and not things that last seven days. Nobody goes to an auction and waits seven days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Auctions are like the dumbest thing ever. I've never, I've been so long since I bought anything off an auction unless I was buying it to flip it. You know what I mean? Like sniping under, yeah. under keyworded auctions or whatever. Like I, I will never buy anything off of an auction, which is the same reason why I always list at buy it now. Cause I assume most people have the same mentality. Like why, you know what I mean? Like on, 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 this is what this is what happens in an auction. On Monday, you bid on the auction. In your head, you're like, "Yeah, I won the new hoverboard," you know. But it's five days to go. You're already telling people at work, "You're like, yeah, I'm getting this hoverboard," you know. Like you're ex exaggerating a little bit. I already bought the hoverboard, you know what I mean? And then Wednesday comes around and you get outbid. Soon enough, you're like, you know, you're you're all you're like twenty percent more than you want to pay for this damn hoverboard trying to win this auction. And then in the last second, you like feel like a crackhead and you give up and you let someone else win. But you know what I mean? And then you're like, I should have just bought it. Like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah I mean, people don't have that FOMO anymore when it comes to like those long auctions. Like, because we live in a society that is capital rich at the moment. Right. Like, very good. Is worth more. Convenience is worth more than money. That's Amazon is yep. doing that. I think, yeah, and I think it's only going to get as the economy is good and technology is accelerating that too because technology is giving people more options. Like the average, if you live in a big city and you have a car that meets Uber's requirements, you can make three hundred dollars a day driving for Uber, having no skills at all. Uh, dude, I, if I when I was in college, if I could have had that job, like initially in college, like oh my gosh, dude, right, it's like. I mean, it's, it's not, so it's not like, you know, you have to be a smart Uber driver and know how to work the system. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but still just like as technology gets better and we can do everything faster and then like certain types of jobs are going to not even exist because like AI will do it for us. Like the, we have the ability to do more with our time or to make more money with our time. And so we value our time more, you know, like, and so like, why would I go to Ross to pick up a plunger for five bucks? when I could, and that would take 45 minutes and, or I could get one on Amazon for 18 bucks and it would take 13 seconds. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Like I, I actually yeah. got mad at my wife for going to the store for dumb shit before, because I was like, look, like why you go to the store, you're gone for an hour and a half to get what? Like just buy it on Amazon. I don't care how much you go to school five days a week. You're only here for two days a week. You can't, or two days on the weekend. You can't spend an hour and a half looking for a plunger. Exactly. It, it's going to be cyclic too. These things, all these things follow the cycle. Capital follow the cycle. These types of things follow the cycle. Like there's going to be an ebb and flow. No one ever thought Facebook would be like MySpace, but that's what it's become. So get, really. get this, things change. get this. When I was in Seattle at the Merch by Amazon conference uh, recently, and that video will be getting posted soon. Um, there was the head of Merch by Amazon who was there and I wasn't allowed to film him or anything like because he wasn't there like officially to like he was there with permission, but not like officially to like make a statement for the company. You know what I mean? But I asked him a question. I said, what do you think about Merch like in other countries? Because like 
merch by Amazon just expanded to like UK and Germany. And, um, but like doing what I do, I'm really in touch with Amazon sellers in all kinds of different countries. And the markets there aren't developed as the American Amazon market is their, their shoppers are not, they don't consume as much as our shoppers do. Right. Like in America, if you don't shop on Amazon, you're crazy. Like take you to the loony bin. You know what I mean? And in other countries, it's not like that. Not everyone shops on Amazon. They buy from like Asda, which is Walmart or, um, you know, I was in Europe and there was billboards all over the place for Amazon and then commercials on TVs that I would see. And I was thinking how there's no advertisements for Amazon in America, really. They don't have to advertise anymore. You know what I mean? So, um, so but I just asked him about it and he was like, he said that I asked him like, what's, do they foresee the growth of Amazon merch, which is, you know, similar to a parallel to Amazon in general to these other countries. And he said, we're only 5% of the way of where we want to be with the Amaz with the American consumer. How crazy is that? So yeah. they're like, what we're viewing right now is like Amazon is what it is. And like people even think like it's saturated on Amazon. Amazon themselves are think they're only 5% of the way. And the way he said it was really good. He said, we're only 5% of the way uh, to where we think we can make the shopping experience better. Because that's their whole job. That's their whole ideal is like, how can we make the shopping experience better for people? And they think they're only 5% of the way there, which is insane can you imagine uh the amazon consumer consuming 20 times more than they are right now well i don't know if it's that specific it, it's more like i think that that five percent is less about that and more about so bezos always says i want to make this the most Amazon is the most customer-centric platform on the planet right. in history. And uh, maybe he's more talking to that. And if he's saying, we're only 5% of the way there, then, and they're not talking about money, then everybody else is in very, very, very serious trouble. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's going to be ridiculous. Like, I feel like I'm going to – like, if I go to Kohl's to buy something, like, they're going to give me a massage and a free haircut just for coming in. And that's the only reason I went in. <laughs> Well, like, oh, I spent all my paycheck on lattes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm going to get off the phone it, with you and yeah, see if I get yeah. someone else on the phone. Thanks for calling in, though, Corey. I appreciate you, bro. Peace. Peace. Yeah, have a good night. Peace. All right. So a couple people have called that I know um, in real life. I'll take one more call before I end it up, wrap it up, end it up. Uh, how long have I been going for? Does anyone know? What are we? What are we doing here? Uh, in real life, okay. Hey, uh, pause the uh, the live show. Welcome to Reezy Talks Live. Who's this? What's up, bro? It's Jared, a flipping genius. How you doing, man? Hey, Jared, how are you doing, man? Flipping genius. Good, good, bro. Good, man. Congrats on uh, passing the 50k subscriber. Oh, today, thank man. you, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good, good. I'm glad to be back in the seat taking the live calls again. I'm going to start doing this once a week again. But uh, how could I help you out, man? Um, first off, man, I just want to appreciate all the uh, the content. Uh, definitely has helped me upstage my business, man. Hit the next level for sure. Uh, I just quit my job a couple months ago to go into full, full-time reselling. So, Hell yeah. Uh, my Congra really congratulations, man. Let's get some some claps Thank up you. in the chat for the flipping genius because he just went full time reselling, and he divorced the workforce. I'm proud of you, bro. Yep. Yeah, I didn't even have to sign a prenup either. I just bounced. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. Awesome. Did you pull a who's coming with me or no? You just you just left quietly. Uh. Yeah, I, I try to live. I try to leave peacefully, but I have people hitting me up for, "Hey, man, what you're getting into on the side?" So, right, uh, there was definitely some, some curiosity, which is it's, that's when you know it's a good time to go. Yeah, so, yeah, they they want to yeah. know, man. They're like, "Wait, is it real? He did it." And I think I think that's really important. Is that um, someone could tell you something, um, but when some or they can show you something, and showing you is always better. But even then, still, I think sometimes we might not think it's real or believe it. But when someone that you know 
and trust as a relation good friend when they show you something you know or when they accomplish something and you're like wait he did that like i grew up with him or like that's my boy like it seems much more real so i'm not surprised that you know when you leave the nine to five you got people hitting you up asking you about reselling totally i think actions definitely speak way louder than words as much as you empower yourself like yeah, i'm gonna go ahead and you know jump head first and like i'm just doing this all the people that kind of are watching you to see what you're doing to see what you're you know what you're about it kind of empowers them a little bit too because they see okay this is for real like right he can do it then what what what's holding me back why can't i step up why can't i start building something and eventually right just and so it's, into what I want it's to do. yeah and it's it's really it's it's exactly like that so and i know because i'll have people that you know maybe i don't see them you know I'll see him at a wedding, haven't seen him for a long time, whatever. And they'll be like, yeah, what are you up to? Uh, I guess now it's different. Like they probably know I'm doing the YouTube stuff or whatever, but they'd be like, what are you, you know, what are you doing? And I'm like, just same stuff. I'm still reselling 10 years later. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, like niceties or whatever. It's like, they still don't think it's a real job or don't understand it. You know what I mean? But if it was, it's because I'm not that person to them. You know what I mean? Like if it was like their, their cousin or their neighbor that they grew up with or whatever, you know, like the same message delivered by a different person, you know, at a different moment, you know, can have a, a totally different impact. Yeah. And I think some people are rooting for, you know, they're like right on. That's awesome. And then other people are like, he'll be back. And then like six oh, months goes by a year. Goes the by, the, the like, funny, the funny part is that down. they're both, they're both actually rooting for you. Right. Because you're like the fuck I'll be back. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. Awesome. So what's up? What's so up? What's up right now? Yeah, I know there's people trying to call in. So let me just ask a question. Yeah. Um, so I'm hiring um, employees, right? Okay. So, Good deal. Um, I'm doing the interview process and the whole nine yards. So I'm hiring a full time employee. My question is, in hiring an employee that I got for 40 hours a week, okay. I want them to obviously be the most productive. The thing that takes the most time for me is listening, hands down. So that's where I'm going to start them doing is just concentrating on listening. I'll still take the pictures. They're going to do listening. Okay. And being optimal to grow, should I focus on cheating, like smaller ticket items as far as price point that I can get for pennies on the dollar and have them just continuously listing? It's still good stuff that has good sell-through rate. And it's not like I'm just picking up a bag of clothes and being like, right. you know, sell all these old Navy ripped up whole t-shirts. Like they're still good inventory. Would you focus on volume or would you still focus on trying to get really good items and just make sure that their keywords are legit description? So why, why, why can't you do both just because you don't have that many employees? No, no, no. So I definitely think I have enough inventory to keep somebody busy for a while as far as, you know, listing full time. But I know eventually the scale is like so. Land. So, like, I would, I would say, I would say, do both, especially if they're both profitable. But if you're limited in in manpower um, or time, you know, like the higher ticket items, if you divide, you know, it's all about like how much money are you making per hour that you're paying your employee, and then also you have to factor in like your per overhead amount or per like square foot of your working area or whatever, you know, like. Like how grocery store grocery stores rate the grocery store. Like, what's your profit per like square foot of the grocery store, right? Um, oh, and so, so you just need to think about you know what's what's better. But if you're not limited by either employ you know labor or capital, I would say have a good mix of both because the higher ticket items sell less frequently, and then the lower ticket yeah. item ones are going to pay all the bills, pay your employees you know, even, even put you in the black, you know, you're making profit. And then the other ones, you know, well, you know, you just need to figure out what, what's going to work the best for your situation in your scenario. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't neglect either option. Um, unless, unless there was a reason why. And personally I would yeah. trend towards the smaller items that you could sell more of just cause it's more repeatable, more systemizable, um, lower price point items are consumed more. So you're going to be making more sales. Um, but it's always good to have a variety of inventory. So just to hedge your bet, you know, like maybe that thing that you're selling goes out of style and then you'll have whatever else you're selling can keep you going to the next thing. Right. 
Yeah, because that's that's kind of where I'm at. Because I know a majority of the of the buyers on eBay, they're average, it's twenty dollars. Is a, a vast majority of the people that use eBay buy things for under twenty dollars. So those are your bread and butter, but also you want to get those higher ticket items because you want a, a different audience to come to your store and, and make, you know, obviously you can buy something for a dollar and make 250 on it. Right. You know, well, there's the also, price. there's That's also, big. there's also something to be said, and I'm not an expert on this, but I know that the eBay search algorithm uh, and the way it favors your store which the more it favors your store or your items, the more money you're going to make because it's going to be delivering your items to more searches, right? Um, I think that units sold, you know, is probably definitely one of the factors that it looks at. So it's like, would you rather sell, you know, what, how does, how healthy does a store look to eBay if it sells one item a day for a hundred dollars or 10, $10 items? I would say that the store that sells more units, you know, appears more healthy to the store, more transactions, et cetera. Even though it's eBay's making the same fees off of both sales or whatever, or maybe a little bit more off of the more transaction because of the per uh, listing fees or whatever. But um, so maybe, you know, there's an answer in there somewhere where like the, the volume of smaller ticket sales really helps your store to get seen in results more, which return helps you sell the higher ticket items more. Um, there's probably someone in the chat that knows about this. Corey might know who was who just called in. Um, I feel like that that definitely is probably true. So, but you got to try everything out and just see see what works for you. But generally, I'd say just try and scale it and do do both. Start with whichever one's easier, and then use that to grow into doing both of them. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for calling in, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate you too, man. There's a there's a Mumpy Bugs jersey in the mail coming to you. Oh, dude, you that, you so. got it? You got it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, right one. I know. I know your swag. So I'm I'm so hyped, bro. I remember it's been a long time in the making. I'm so hyped right now. For sure. It's coming. Hey, man. I appreciate everything you do. Everybody that's listening, smash that like button. Let's get this guy some uh, some solid likes because. He takes time out of his day to provide all this information. So the least you can do is uh, make sure this video is liked. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Have a good night. Flipping genius. You too, man. My all pleasure. right. Have a good night. Stay up. Bye. All right, guys. So that was basically it for the show. Please smash the like button. Please comment down below with timestamps to the parts part part multiple parts of the video that you thought was the most useful i will pick a couple of you guys and give you a shout out in the next youtube video i really appreciate it because it helps me to take these one to two hour videos and extract out the nuggety pieces to make into shorter form content for facebook for instagram and maybe even you know for youtube because this is a two hour long episode there's little 10 minute chunks that could be standalone youtube videos in themselves as always this will be making it to the podcast um i appreciate all you guys for listening hit the like button if you guys want to be part of my exclusive mastermind group go to patreon.com slash reezy um there should be some links down below for like equipment that i use and software and services that i use to sell on amazon um yeah but other than that i'll see you guys next week monday at 6 p.m on reezy talks i love you guys and thank you for tuning in remember guys if you ain't flipping you slipping peace <laughs>